High on the roof above Waterstone's bookshop, a time-lapse camera captures the final preparations that have been underway in Hitchens Marketplace since dawn. Thursday, June the 14th, 2012, promises to be a memorable day, when the Queen visits our town for the first time since she became monarch. She visited Hitchin once before, in 1932, when she was six years old. Her parents, then Duke and Duchess of York, brought her with them when they popped into William Upchurch's Antiques Gallery in Bancroft. In those days, such informal shopping trips were not unusual. On visits to the Bowes Lyon family estate at St Paul's Waldenbury, where her mother grew up, the young princess was able to enjoy a normal family life. Until the day, some four years later, when Edward VIII's abdication changed her destiny forever. Since becoming Queen, Her Majesty's made a good many visits to St Paul's Walden. This in the 1950s, when she and Prince Philip attended morning service at All Saints Church. Although these occasions established a special link with the people of Hitchin, it was not until the year of her Diamond Jubilee that the Queen was able to visit the town itself. So, securing a plum spot to see the royal walkabout in Hitchin Marketplace called for an early start. Some had been there since 6am. With the red carpet in place, Crocodiles of more than a thousand children from 24 local schools were soon arriving to be marshalled into position by their teachers. As the time drew near, there were final briefings for those due to be presented, among them the owners of some of Hitchin's best-known independent shops. The visit had been coordinated jointly by Paul Brenham, a deputy lieutenant of Hertfordshire, Hitchin's town centre manager, Keith Hoskins, and North Hearts District Council. The cheery folk in Victorian garb were volunteers from the town's popular homage to early education, the British Schools Museum. They had special cause to celebrate because they were due to receive the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service, the top recognition for voluntary groups in the UK. There to guard it were the pupils of Wilshire Dacre School, who had been chosen to represent Hitchin children of Victorian times. Shortly after 10 o'clock, the choir of St Mary's Parish Church arrived to take their places in the square. With them was the vicar, the Reverend Michael Roden, who, with music from the Hitchin band, had about half an hour to rehearse everyone for a rousing rendition of Jerusalem to greet the Queen. As the square continued to fill up, some resorted to more adventurous vantage points. But everyone had to wait just a bit longer, because there was also quite a crowd waiting at Hitchin Railway Station. For some, it seemed a very long wait. Throughout this time, the crowd was entertained by the Chamber Strings Orchestra from North Hearts Music School, who greeted the Queen's arrival with the prelude from Hubert Parry's English Suite. Because Hitchin was the first port of call on the Queen's day-long visit to Hertfordshire, the Lord Lieutenant, the Countess of Verulam, was at the station to present leading county dignitaries from the church and local and national government. Here, Her Majesty is meeting the Member of Parliament, Peter Lilly. From the children of Purwell Primary School came the first of dozens of poses that would be offered to the Queen during her brief visit. Soon she was off on her way, as the royal car headed out of the station forecourt for the town centre, travelling slowly up the high street to park on the red carpet. For a moment, the Queen seemed to disappear from view as she stepped out into the throng to be greeted by Hitchin members of North Hearts District Council. Among those introduced by Lady Verulam were Councillor Joan Kirby, the chairman, and councillors Ray Shakespeare-Smith and Judy Billing. Then, off through the lines of children, 
for a short speech of welcome from her cousin, Sir Simon Bowes Lyon. He told the Queen that her visit gave our community the opportunity to thank her personally for all that she had done for the country, and from which we had all benefited in our own ways. Then it was time to present the Queen's Award for Outstanding Voluntary Work to Terry Ransom and Yvonne Limbrick, two leading figures in the campaign to restore and open the unique and now quite famous British Schools Museum. The colour of the Queen's lovely outfit, pinned with a large amethyst and diamond brooch, suggested she had gone to some trouble to acknowledge Hitchin's history as a lavender town. She may well have been aware that over 160 years earlier, in 1851, this Quaker gentleman, William Ransom, founder of Ransom's Pharmaceutical Company, presented Queen Victoria with a bottle of lavender oil when the Royal Train stopped at Hitchin Station on its way to Balmoral. Oil distilled from lavender cultivated on Mr Ransom's own fields at Hitchin. So, with Hitchin lavender now being grown by the Hunter family on their 12-acre site at Cadwell Farm in Ickleford, what better than a replica gift? A basket of lavender oils complete with a bouquet of red Harkness roses and white and blue Hitchin lavender, together with sprigs of barley and wheat to highlight the town's history of brewing and milling. There was even a direct descendant of William Ransom to make the presentation to Her Majesty, his great-great-great-grandson, Theodore Dye. During the next few minutes, the Queen spoke with many of the children who had waited patiently in the bubbling sea of red, white and blue to offer their poses, cards and other anniversary gifts. Then it was across to the entrance of Churchyard where Keith Hoskins introduced the proprietors of five of Hitchin's best-known shops, Gatwood's The Jewellers, Hawkins' Clothing and Department Store, Allingham's Butchers and Brooker's The Ironmongers and Builders Merchants. Outside Halls's Delicatessen, Her Majesty asked Damien Caldwell about the history of his shop. He told her the fireplace in his office had the date 1641 carved on it. For a memento of her visit, Damien presented the Queen with a framed photograph of her mother, taken 30 years earlier, when Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, walked past their shop after a thanksgiving service for the restoration of St Mary's Church. She had wanted to see the Hitchin she remembered from her childhood, when she attended dancing classes at the Sun Hotel. Just time for one more gift. As he offered the Queen a box of fancy cupcakes in her favourite flavours of chocolate, ginger and vanilla, Archie Hodgson's face seemed to reflect the joy of everyone packed into the marketplace that morning. All too soon it was nearly over. But what a lot had been achieved in 45 minutes. Town crier Alan Myatt led the cheers that saw Her Majesty off down Sun Street on the next stage of her Hertfordshire tour, to Stevenage, to open the new maternity unit at Lister Hospital. Under a medieval royal charter granted to the Carmelite monks at Hitchin Priory in 1328, our community became the Royal Manor of Hitchin. It's a title we recall with pride whenever the nation celebrates but never more so than on this sunny June day in 2012, when Queen Elizabeth II included us in the tremendous personal journey she undertook to meet as many of her subjects as possible during her Diamond Jubilee year.